So here we go with part two of this and if you've stumbled across this video and you haven't seen part one you might want to go take a look at it otherwise this is not going to make a lot of sense to you the video the link to the video is up there and now you can see why this system only works with short corners if this log was longer I wouldn't be able to get the saw in here to do this cut so at the end of the last video I got those first two cuts done and I said that it was important to actually do all the cuts in the right order and I'd like to try and explain why and the reason I want this explained is because it once you understand what the steps are and why they're in a certain order it's really easy to remember and it becomes second nature so I think a diagram might be the way to go here and I've done this diagram showing a log going onto a wall where there's going to be a corner at each end so I can explain the whole system properly. The video that's actually playing in the background is me setting up that log that I did the two initial cuts on at the end of the last video. Um, but as you can see, there's not going to be a corner at each end of that, so let's stick with the diagram. So in that diagram, you can see those first four cuts, and those are the first four cuts that you're going to do. And as you're making those cuts, your eye level is above the saw. You're looking down on the saw as you cut. So we do the first cut, the higher one, the upper cut first. And that means that when you're doing the second cut, which is a copy of the first cut, you're trying to get the same angle. You can see the first cut the whole time that you're doing the second cut. So it's easy to match those angles. Now if you just imagine if you were to cut the, first, the, the bottom cut first, then when you cut the top cut, the chainsaw itself is actually going to be in the way and you can't monitor the bottom cut to copy the angle. So next we're going to cut this small vertical cut and you'll see from the video I'm showing now which is the seven minute log that I did at the beginning of the, these videos that I actually did it wrong. I did the small vertical cut first and then the more horizontal cut and what happens is the log then drops down and traps the chainsaw bar And something else happens when you do these two cuts, no matter which order you do them in. That's the horizontal top cut and the small vertical cut. And that is that because the log drops down at this end, the angle at the other end of the log changes. And you haven't done that small vertical cut at that end yet. Do you remember the plywood spaces that I mentioned in the first video? So I'll show you where we use those. So easy fix. You put your spacer in the top horizontal cut and then when you make the small vertical cut nothing's going to move. So now you could make the small vertical cut at the other end knowing that all the angles are still the same. But here's what happens if you go ahead and do that. When it comes time to drop the log into place you're going to be left with two quite big gaps. Each one the width of a chainsaw blade. But we've got an easy fix for this one too. The first little vertical cut is cut using the bottom log as a guide. But before cutting the second one at the other end, what we're going to do is move that log horizontally, in this case to the left. So how far are you going to move it? Well, it depends how exactly you want these joints. If you remember those two blade width gaps that were left before if you didn't move the log before cutting then if you move the log now one blade width to the left and then cut using the bottom log on the right as a guide then you will half those gaps so there'll be a half blade width gap on each side if you want to get it really exact you can move it an other blade width so you're moving it now a total of two blade widths to the left and then when you cut the right hand side small vertical using the log underneath as a guide then that means that when it comes time to take out those triangles and eventually drop the log all the way down you will get a perfect fit. The log will move over to the right and bed down in its own place and once you get all the other wood out from in between it'll fit just right. 
and of course we've eliminated those two gaps. So you might be thinking, well how do I measure a blade width? What's all this about measuring blade widths? I thought there was no measuring involved. Well you don't need to measure a blade width because you've got a blade width right there. And this is really the cool part. See here is rough wood against rough wood so there's more friction than here where we've got that piece of plywood in between. So when you push the log along, that triangle of wood stays put. In fact, it acts as a kind of stopper to tell you that you've moved the log one blade width. Now I use a hammer to move the log and it depends on how big your logs are and how heavy, and how long, um, how much force you need to, to, do, to move the log, but within very little time at all, you'll get to understand and feel the resistance when the gap closes. Now, I said that you could move the log one blade width or two if you want to be really exact. I do it about one and a half. So I just move the log until the little gap closes. I can feel that it's closed and then I give it an extra little tap with the hammer. It moves it a few millimeters further on. And then I can cut the cut in the other end. So I've come around the other side of that same joint and you can see this is a hor horizontal cut on the bottom one and the, and the top one at an angle and obviously when I'm cutting this one I'm coming out to about the edge of this that's as far as I'm going to come but it's not just a case of now cutting this what I do before that is I'm going to move this log and I'm going to go for one chain width outwards. That's about it. Now I'll cut that and you might think that doesn't make a big difference but it does. So here's how it works. So simple it's silly. First of all of course what you're going to do is put your log onto the wall and usually you will try and put it above the log underneath on the center line so that your wall stays vertical. You can do that with a plumb line or a spirit level <clears throat> or just by eye. Now what I then do is I make the cut and once again you can see that if I had long corners on here I wouldn't be able to fit the, ch the chainsaw in to do it so that's the reason for short corners. Um, using the side of the log as a guide and then what happens is when you sink that log in, then you're left with a really quite big gap. In this case, nine centimeters of blade width. Your wall is on center though, but let's start again and just move that log as you're positioning it, just one blade width to the right. So it's not quite in center line. I know this seems ridiculously simple, but it actually took me a few logs to figure it out. Now, when you use the side of the log as a guide to cut that cut, then when you sink the log down because all of our cuts are straight lines there's nothing stopping you simply moving the log across into that gap and getting a nice joint and your log is on the center line of the wall that's not bad at all in fact i'd be happy with that joint even if i'd gone to the bother of drawing it but it'd be nice to just leave it like that we're not going to we're going to put a spacer in. For now, until we get the lateral groove cut. So yes, it is at this point very tempting to take all the spaces out and see how your joint's going. But for the way this, this process works in the system and the various steps, you don't need to take that piece of, of plywood out, the plywood spacer. Just leave that in because we're going to need it there when we come to do the lateral groove which is the next stage. So the reason that you can't just normally build a, a log wall with a log in place with a chainsaw is of course that the chainsaw is a blunt instrument so, so to speak. The chainsaw cut is nearly a centimeter wide so you make a wall like that using a chainsaw you're going to end up with these centimetre gaps all over the place and a wall that's full of centimetre gaps 
well it's not really a wall it's a fence but what I'm hopefully now showing is that with just adding a few little steps little simple steps you can get rid of those centimeter gaps and you can build a log wall with the logs in place with a chainsaw and now me explaining these little steps is obviously taking much longer than it would actually take to do the do the log but I think it's important to explain these steps as as, as much as I can so that you understand the, the concept of, of what it is I'm doing now I had a comment from a guy called Yuri and he was saying that that for a beginner these cuts that I'm making I'm making them look much more easy than they are good comment I, I, I said that well with a little bit of experience they get easier and the only way to get experience is to go ahead and, and, and do them and also that because all of these cuts are just straight cuts then really they are quite quite simple but I had a similar comment from um, one of my patreon supporters saying that the problem he had with this is that I'm saying um, I'm cutting these cuts basically by eye I'm looking and, and imagining a measurement on there and cutting to that measurement and and he didn't wouldn't have the confidence to do that but for anyone else who's thinking like that then bear with me because one of the nice things about this system is that at the point well, that we've got to now with these diagrams and stuff the next points you'll see that everything is very very adjustable easily adjustable so if the angle isn't quite right if the measurement isn't quite right don't worry about it we'll fix that So it's getting cold out here, but I'm going to keep going as long as the temperature doesn't get down to the point where where the batteries stop working on the camera. So I'm using these shorter sections of, of log because I'm running out of long logs of this hewn log style. I do have a few long ones but they're they're really long and I don't want to cut them down. I want to be able to use those for roof supports. So I'm going to be switching soon to the round logs and I'll show you that the system works just the same. Just There's a couple of extra cuts to make but nothing difficult. Now you might be thinking it's going to be a bit strange having uh, hewn logs on the bottom and then changing to round logs, different kinds of logs in the same building. And you'd be right, it is going to be a bit strange. Uh, no idea how it's going to look. Maybe it's going to look terrible, but maybe it looks great, I don't know. Only one way to find out. So I've shown you the theory on how to do the corners and what I really want to do next is is the next stage which is the lateral groove the bottom of the top log as it sits down onto the log underneath all the way along and I want to show you that on one log that goes all the way along from corner to corner um, so I think what I'm gonna do I've been deliberating what to do next I think I'm gonna mess around now with joining these two little log pieces that I've got on that front wall I have to put a, a short log on the side wall on the right where I'm putting a little window but then I have one hewn log of the right length left and I'm gonna put that on the back wall and I'm gonna use that to lead you through the, the system for the lateral groove so I'll go, go ahead with all those things and I will get this uploaded now. Look out for the next one. It will be here very soon. I uh, hope you found this interesting and please leave me some comments and questions.